and welcome back to Let's Play Disciples 2. Today we're going to be jumping into a new saga. And this time we're going to be playing as the Undead Hordes. Should be a lot of fun. And I'm actually going to be playing as the Guildmaster um, on Very Hard. And we can cycle through these. I think I'll play as this guy. He looks alright. I'm playing as the Guildmaster mostly for the hero that is available at the start of the mission. So, which you will see very soon, but first we have to watch the opening sequence and the mission briefing. So, be right back. More than a decade has passed since the first Great Wars ended. When infernal beasts and demons poured forth from the ground, the human empire did their best to resist the unholy onslaught. Alas, the beloved queen was killed, and Uther, the sole heir, disappeared from the realm. The combined forces of the empire and mountain clans with the retrieved runic wisdom sealed the infernal rift before the accursed one could arise. The menace posed by the undead hordes came to an end with the beheading of the dwarven high king, Sturmir. Mortis's vengeance accomplished. Her minions fell lifelessly to the ground. Their languid voices echoed with no answer. Bards feared to weave tales of the suffering brought by the first great wars. Stories of these terrible events traveled only on witches' winds. Mortis, the goddess of the undead hordes, awaited the return of her husband, Galleon. Many centuries had passed since Galleon was murdered by the dwarven god. His body was so horribly mutilated that his regeneration could take an eternity. Glaring into the souls of the living, she saw the existence of a being named Uther. He served as the receptacle for Bethrazen's soul and was trapped in the ancient mountain clan mine of Timoria. His unholy blood could bring Galleon back to life. The location of the mines of Timoria was hidden to all, but tales of Uther's imprisonment would surely be in an empire library. The undead were called upon once again, and rose to carry out the evil bidding of their fleshless goddess to locate the forsaken Timoria Mines. Okay, so our first objective as the undead hordes is to visit a library. Doesn't sound all that exciting. First hero is going to be named Brian. Mortis whispers to us. What does she request of us, Prushin? She needs to locate Tamoria Mines. We have begun what is to be the rebirth of a god. Her orders will be obeyed. The spirits have led us here. The plans to Tamoria's Mines are in a library on these very lands. We must acquire them at all costs. Alright, here we go. We've got Brian. He is a vampire, or a Nosferat. Um, he does very little damage, but he takes half of that damage and converts it to health for himself. So it's definitely nice to have, especially once you start increasing his damage output. Uh, once he levels up a few times. And I'm going to be adding a fighter to his side, which is you know your basic melee units. A ghost, which will paralyze a single enemy unit. Uh, it's only a 65% chance to hit, but it will take uh, a single unit out of the battle for an entire turn, which is really useful a lot of the time. And then an initiate, which is sort of a basic area of effect unit. And I'll take all the potions. And we'll take a look at Ashgan, which is the same as every other Capital Guardian, but looks a bit different. 
looks kind of freaky, actually. How about we just leave that alone? And we'll go kill a thug and some peasants. Now this should be an easy battle. Um, very low level units up front, which is nice. And we can paralyze the thug in the back. And we'll have our fighter wait. So we can get an extra hit and kill that thug. And there we go, first battle complete. And we get five experience for it. So it'll take a little while before we are leveled up, but we can handle it. Let's see, a thug, a peasant, and a man at arms. Yeah, I think we should be able to handle that. Now, if we... Let's attack the peasant, because we're going to get damage from the man-at-arms pretty much no matter what. So we'll cut down on the damage that would have come from here instead. Well, that sucks. Oh my goodness. Come on, guys. Alright, that's better. And then... Wait. Because the ghost is going to try to paralyze... Okay, we're fine. Wow, this battle has been full of misses. But it's fine, we got out of it okay, and we are rewarded with a potion of healing, which I might use immediately. Not looking too good. And we might as well end our turn here. We'll take a look at the capital first. Um, the undead capital looks really nice. Um, we've got this creature flying above one of our towers. It's probably a bat of some sort, as vampires are sort of a mainstay of an, any undead army. And we've got another little tower over here with a guild on top, which because we're a guild master, we get automatically. Good to have. And then we'll be building some of these later, and I'll go over what all of them are when the time comes. For now, we'll end our turn and see who we're up against. Looks like Edwin, the Lord of the Empire, doesn't like us much. The Empire will punish your insolence. Our insolence apparently being just the fact that we're here. They don't seem to like us much, but nothing we can really do about that. So we can take out that one no problem. It's basically the same battle as earlier. So not too difficult. Kill one of the peasants at least. And then hopefully paralyze. And kill the thug. Okay, that worked out. Although he's kind of low on health at the moment. Shouldn't be a huge issue though, as long as... Yeah, I might have to heal him first before taking that on. But we don't 
have to worry about it just yet. We do have to build some structures first. Well, I don't technically have to. I don't need them yet, but uh, we'll take a look. We've got a cavern, which will upgrade our wyverns to Doom Jakes. But I didn't choose a wyvern to add to my party, so we won't need to build that at all. Um, we've got the structure to upgrade our specters, or our ghosts rather, to specters. Um, which makes them hit a little more often, and of course their health goes up and everything. It's generally a, just a good upgrade overall. And then we get warlocks as well from our initiates. Um, they're actually pretty good, and they will upgrade into various branching pathways. Um, I really like the choices you have there. And the building looks kind of cool, too. And then we've also got a choice right from the beginning for our fighter. We can either upgrade him to a zombie or a Templar. Again, the only it's basically the same as the Empire, the difference between... Um, the Inquisitor and the Knight. One has wards and a little less health. And then of course our basic uh, buildings for magic and healing and all that. And for now we'll end our turn and see what happens. And unfortunately as the undead I'm playing as a guildmaster so I don't get a 15% um, health bonus per turn although it looks like we did get some a little bit of healing anyway not very much but uh, it might help tide us over although I still might use this potion anyway but I'll deal with everything in the next video and I will see you soon